Hello everyone, my name is Pixorus, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. No, this isn't a creative super flat world, it is the Minecraft Survival Guide world, because I have been doing a lot of flattening out of this area around the museum. There were some hills over here, there were some changes in the landscape around here. Basically anywhere that you see flat grass, but you do not see the grown kind of tall grass, <laughs> the, the grass plants coming up from it and flowers, is an area that I have had to flatten out in preparation for the build site of the museum, which has meant covering over a pretty large river and some sections of forest biome here and there where the grass was in kind of rolling verdant hills kind of like you see further out there and believe me this has taken quite a bit of time <laughs> been spending a little bit of time doing this off camera and also you can kind of tell where the river is because of the changes in biome color which is a pretty interesting thing if you look at it from close up the difference is kind of hard to discern but if you look at it from the air you can really see where that river winds through the landscape and so today i'm going to pack up my experiments with the dragon head from the previous episode i think we did a pretty good job of this and we're actually going to start excavating some of this area and planning out the areas of the museum. We're going to try and get a loose floor plan figured out today and the reason for that is because I want to work on some of the exhibits and work on exactly how all of this stuff is going to be contained and for that to happen we really need to have a plan in place. This is not the kind of build that I'm going to be able to just wing it and so we really need to figure out what the floor plan is going to be. But where the excavation part comes in is that somewhere underneath the ground here we have have an end portal room because I chose this build site for the museum specifically because it was over the top of a stronghold and in fact if my notes are correct if my uh, screenshots are accurate from the times I was exploring this area the end portal is actually there <laughs> it's basically directly beneath me at around 2070 negative 904 not only that but we have a couple of spawners in this area as well. Legit dungeon spawners which I discovered while I was caving in this area actually kind of looking for them hoping that there would be some spawners in this area and there are. I have the coordinates for both of them and one of them is roughly over here it's about 2095 and then negative 940 something so it's around here somewhere and then there's another one basically just outside the bounds of the museum wall here on the opposite side. So what I'm thinking is either we will have wings of the museum kind of coming out a little bit in this direction or we will have a section underneath the museum that actually goes under the ground here itself. But I would really like to effectively get a kind of wireframe box built up to show exactly where that stuff is and have it visible above the ground so that I can make plans for where everything in the floor plan of the museum is going to go and what changes I will need to make to the idea I have regarding the structure. So today we're actually going to do a bit of digging. For that I need to go and repair my tools because especially my silk touch pickaxe is looking a little bit the worse for wear after taking down some of this terrain. So uh, I'll be right back. There we go, much better. And to help me excavate these areas, I figure I'll take down the beacon that I've got over here at the perimeter. Not really using it for much else now that we flattened out the hill that was right here. And I'm going to bring this closer to the center and closer between those two spawners so that we can hopefully use the radius of the beacon to dig out the entire area a little bit faster. There we go, the beacon is back in place, it's got haste two, and we are ready to start digging. Now unfortunately I think the uh, portal room is actually kind of off center from the entrance of the museum so I'm kind of wondering if I might end up shifting some of the walls around so that we can have this thing centered. It's probably going to be underground anywhere when we end up building it but there's no time like the present, right? We may as well start digging.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. It certainly was kind of cool digging out this end portal room at least. This end portal room looks kind of special actually. It, it, it's weird. It's lo like looking into a model of the end portal room almost, which is kind of the effect I want for the museum. In a way, I kind of want to imagine that these things are replicas and not actually real, even though they clearly are real. <laughs> it's a weird kind of vibe I'm going for here, but I think this is actually a really fun thing to have here. Whether or not it's actually going to be part of the entrance to the museum, I am reconsidering, simply because of how far down it is and how much extra stuff we would have to do to incorporate this entire pit into the design of the museum. Like, it'd be cool to have a glass floor to walk out on so that you could look down directly on the end portal, but then that would feel like it'd have to be the centerpiece of the room, but I want the centerpiece of the room to be this dragon skeleton and have a few other things actually on the floor around here. So I think instead what I might end up doing is having a glass floor here lower down and making that part of the exhibit that you get to via something else, via an another staircase or something that's going to take you further down into the body of the museum itself. And that certainly removes the problem of having to move the entrance uh, walls and the entrance kind of dotted line yet again because this definitely doesn't match up centered with this whole uh, <laughs> setup that I have over here. But that should be fine. And the end portal room looks absolutely phenomenal. I think looking down in a spawner over here is kind of cool. And I almost do want to put a glass floor over this one because it's not that far down that the spawner actually starts. And it also provides a safe barrier for visitors to the museum so they aren't within spawnable range. Because right now, as I stand here on the surface, the spawner is not active. And while right now there are torches and stuff around it, if we want this to look like a natural dungeon, we'll have to be a little bit more subtle about the lighting. And the last thing we exposed in the time lapse that I didn't mention earlier because I kind of improvised it at the time was this abandoned mineshaft, which I knew I had coordinates for because it was in the area, and I wasn't sure if I was going to expose it to the sky like this. And we might once again close that off or have a glass floor for people to walk on so that they can take a look at the stuff below. But the reason I chose to do that was because the other spawner I located actually ended up being a little bit further away and out here in this kind of bay area here. It, it was kind of in this little offshoot there, more or less directly in the middle. It was like slightly off to one side, but it would have meant excavating some ocean there. So it was pretty deep down and I didn't really want to mess with that. So there's a spider spawner down there but unfortunately I feel like it doesn't really fit with the structure of the museum. It seems a little bit too far away and a little bit too far down. So having the spawner over here that's closer to the surface should be enough and we can include that in whatever exhibit we decide to do on spawners. Now I think what we're going to do is lay out a little bit more of the floor plan of the museum. And I've got my eye in the sky here, I've got my camera account logged in so I can see a little bit more of this from the top down because I'm talking about actually having some pretty large rooms in here and I kind of need the aerial perspective to see exactly how much room all of this stuff is going to take up. To help me mark this stuff out I've got some of the concrete and concrete powder that I brought with me. I'll probably need to dip out and get a little bit more of that here and there but I'll try and be as concise as I can with what I've got and I think I'm just going to use like dotted lines kind of like what I have here both so I can measure some walkways and corridors and stuff out and so that I save a little bit on materials at the same time. So I think this back wall here is actually going to be I reckon we're going to have a five block wide corridor starting here. And thinking about it, I might actually expand that to seven blocks wide just so we have a little bit of leeway either side. Like if the central walkway, if the actual walking path that the uh, visitors to the museum can take, that pedestrians can take around this place is three blocks wide, then that gives us room along the side for two blocks before we hit the wall here. And I feel like that's still... Yeah, that's still going to be about enough space as for what I want because we might end up putting a little bit more detail in here and there. We might even put some stuff in glass cases, you know, some armor stands or something like that here and there. So we'll do another seven block gap over here and then that's where the next wall is going to go. So we'll put like a little wall there made out of these red concrete blocks just so I can be a little bit clearer to myself about where this stuff is going. And this area here is going to be the kind of entrance hall of the museum. We're probably going to have a sort of reception area where people could get tickets and that kind of stuff so I think we'll probably leave a little bit more space in here and that's overlapping slightly with the pit that we've just dug for the end portal but that should be fine we can work around that where we need to and look who just decided to show up the museum has some guests already <laughs> it's funny but pillager patrols have been spawning here so frequently I think it may just be because it's a nice 
blank open space and I'm spending so much time in these chunks, but the pillager patrols are pretty frequent. Thankfully, they seem to wander off in that direction because I think there might be a village somewhere over there and that is ultimately leading them away from my building site, which is good because I don't really feel like dealing with them right now. And so this area here is going to be the main entrance into the central gallery and I'm putting kind of big entrances marked out in grey concrete powder just so I can see where some like large and impressive doors are going to go. The rest of these sections to the side, these kind of like walkways, and I think this is actually going to be a solid wall. We'll kind of have that filled in there, but I think that's going to just be walled off in whatever building material I decide to use for the interior of this place. These walkway areas to either side might have archways or something like that, but something a little bit more basic. This is supposed to be a more grand entrance, kind of drawing you in towards the center of the area where there's going to be the main sort of central gallery, the central atrium of the entire thing, and I think this is where we're going to have the Ender Dragon skeleton, the Dragon Egg, and then passageways leading out in all directions to other places. I think outlining this central hall here, it's actually going to be pretty large, because it's not just going to be the Ender Dragon skeleton in the center here, I kind of want the entire thing to focus on aspects of the end. If the dragon is going to be the centerpiece of the entire thing, then it feels like this almost main exhibition hall we're working with here is going to have a lot of end-related stuff in it, as though the whole exhibition has been curated and the end is kind of the main focus. So grabbing a little bit more black concrete, I'm outlining that. It's currently going over the beacon because I don't feel like taking it down and also it's kind of intersecting with the abandoned mineshaft section here. But if you take a look at this from our eye in the sky right now, from the camera account, you will see this is actually a pretty large looking area. And I almost wish that the end portal could be at the center of that now. But once again, we have the dragon skeleton that plans to be at the center of it. So we're looking at a pretty large area. And I'm doing this more by feel than I am by exact measurements because I don't have meticulous plans for where I want absolutely everything to go. I just want to give myself a wide enough area that I can get started with it and then maybe adjust a few other things later. So when the entire room comes together, this is about the scale we're working with, and that would allow us to build replicas of things like the obsidian pillars that occur in the end to scale, basically like the scale they appear in the end, which is going to be like quite a large circular base kind of like this for some of the larger ones and obviously we could have a couple of the smaller ones represented as well but we're, we're looking at we're looking at quite a large obsidian tower that could almost be like a pillar holding up the ceiling or it could be just present in the main atrium here in the main hall and the ceiling just needs to be high enough so that those could fit in all right but yeah looking at the surface area we've got here that's a pretty large spot but still a very small fraction of what we've got to work with in terms of overall space here, so that's not a bad decision. We could even arrange them in a circle around the Ender Dragon skeleton if we wanted to, and one of the things I have considered doing is bringing over the invincible end crystal that we have over at my main base over at Founders Forge, because that's just sat on the mountaintop shooting into the sky towards zero zero. And while it's going to still do that when it's over here, so it's probably going to be heading somewhere in like that direction towards negative x coordinates is sort of over there. I think it's still going to look pretty impressive. And if we wanted to maybe have some of those arranged around here so they point towards the dragon skeleton, that could be pretty cool too. I am taking some measurements here just to make sure some of the structure actually remains centered. And the center line of the museum's entrance is at Z negative 892. So I'm just making sure here and there that there are Yep, there we go, 892, great. They, so they're making sure that some of these entrances and exits line up okay with it themselves. Because while the entire building does not have to be symmetrical, and in some cases is intentionally not going to be symmetrical, I do want to make sure that some of the stuff has some classical symmetry about it, which will really help with the design later on. Especially with large areas like this, where repetition and symmetry are really going to help with the design of the place. Now, maybe this is just because I'm right-handed, but I feel like to start off with, I want to turn left almost as though I'm reading left to right in terms of like the progression that we're going to make around here. So I feel like over here on the left hand side, we need to have some of the exhibitions that are to do with the natural world, grass, dirt, trees, and all of the other resources that come with that. And so I think the main entrance to that is going to be over here. And once you get out into the wider complex of the museum from the central area, you're going to find a lot of conjoined rooms where they're going to have similar themes that kind of 
work their way into each other. So while this room might focus on stuff like grass and flowers and dirt and, you know, dirt variants, things like mycelium pods all, farmland, that kind of stuff, maybe the farmland segues so this next room is about crops. And then we're going to have a larger room attached to the back here, which I'm probably going to have to clear more forest and stuff for, but that's going to be the room that's dedicated to trees. And the reason we need a larger room dedicated to trees is because of wanting to showcase a few of the variants that can happen with things like oak trees, which have shorter and taller variants, have giant variants that sprout with a bunch of leaves in. Likewise, individual trees like spruce and jungle also have two by two variants, and dark oak trees have a few different versions of them. We're probably not going to have every single tree and every single possibility for the way trees generate because that would require even more room than I think I am willing to allow for an exhibit of that size but I think it's going to uh, it's going to require a fair amount of space just to illustrate that there is some variety between different types of oak trees you know while we're at it here I do want to kind of cordon off this spawner over here a little bit and so we're going to do that with these like yellow and black concrete corners as if to say like you know this is caution tape kind of thing except we would have it going across the top here but then i uh, would need to convert some of this concrete powder into black concrete so i think around the back there we're actually going to continue on from the natural world there into stuff like stone types and it feels like at this stage if we're doing all of the more basic materials around the side here we're really not going to have enough space to do the more advanced stuff on this side and go into things like ores and iron and tools and metal and that kind of stuff. And it feels like we're probably going to have to move outwards from each of these exhibits and have everything become sort of more complex as the museum expands outward. I also want to start introducing rooms that aren't just giant squares as well. Even though giant squares are obviously very <laughs> thematically appropriate for Minecraft, I do want to have some more like L-shaped rooms here and there. So I think what we'll probably end up doing is putting one in here like so and then as we box this room off, you'll see in a second when I switch back to the camera account view, you'll be able to see this whole area kind of taking on a different shape. And we can make that symmetrical or we can not. We can have things shaped more around what we want to do with the room itself than worrying about the structure of things being symmetrical everywhere. And one thing's for sure, I think I really need to start bringing name tags everywhere with me because I'm going to need to capture some of these mobs sooner or later. And while, of course, it would be kind of fun to go on a couple of, like, museum expeditions <laughs> to get some of this stuff. I swear, there's so many zombies walking around here holding eggs. There must be a chicken under there that's just supplying them with the eggs right now. And, yep, looks like there's a lot of mobs underneath there. Well, I do need to, I need to either light up these areas or just decide to fill them in at some point. But like I was saying, sooner or later for the more zoo-themed exhibit where we're going to be capturing all of the mobs in the game, I will want to make sure that we've got a few of them handy already. And it could be fun to go out on expeditions to find specific mobs, but other mobs, like the more common things like skeletons and zombies, are just going to be around here permanently. So I feel like having some, some uh, name tags handy will make sure that we can grab those when we see them and when we want them. Okay, I think I've got the initial layout of the museum figured out here and this is this is very rudimentary at the moment it's still kind of a work in progress but I think I have a bunch of rooms now laid out where we can kind of see the progression of early game Minecraft coming together which is going to be the way I want to tie together the first exhibits here as though we're kind of starting from scratch over here with the natural world, moving around into stone and mining and tools and all of that kind of stuff. And then from there, we go around to the sort of Iron Age of Minecraft with the white section over there. And then finally, we get to the diamond section here. And naturally, you might think that, yes, the diamond section should be the largest section of all because that's where you spend most of your time at end game. But really, that feels like the end of progression with the exception of netherite, which we'll, of course, get into when we're talking about an exhibition with the nether in mind. But I think looking at the layout from the top down here, this is at least a good start. And the layout from the front at least feels sort of symmetrical. The diamond and the nature exhibit on the left hand side are sort of roughly the same size and there's obviously a little bit more infrastructure we could work into the museum here and there. We can put in like little, you know, gift shops and information stands and stuff like that. But trust me, this is only the beginning because we have a lot of room to work with in every direction pretty much and we'll need to include 
a lot more stuff than just this. This is just me laying the foundations for what could potentially end up being a much more expansive build. That will, of course, require me to expand the landscape here, and I'm already having to make some concessions, especially over here where <laughs> I haven't quite flattened out the landscape to the fullest extent I need to to lay out the foundations for these rooms. But the idea is that each of these early exhibits can springboard into a different concept, right? So you start out with nature, you end up moving outward into trees, and then you end up looking at all of the stuff that you can do with those things. You end up looking at all of the different wood types, all of the different, you know, things you can craft with wood and so on and so forth. Once again, we are going to be trying to include everything that we know about Minecraft in the museum. So there's really going to be a lot to work with here. You know, there's going to be a section on flowers and plants, grass and dirt and podzol and all of that kind of stuff. This L-shaped or I guess R-shaped, the kind of right angled room here, you end up talking about stone and then you start talking about some of the things you can do with stone, which is naturally going to lead around to tools, but might have kind of side areas here and there for building blocks like stone brick and all of the variants therein. You can obviously talk about other stuff related to stone here and there and other things that maybe stonemasons could provide. You could have a section for decorative stone too. Then you move on to this next area and the Iron Age kicks in. You start talking about all of the stuff that you can do once you have access to iron. You start looking at things like armor. You start looking at things like you know, iron tools and being able to mine redstone and gold. And from there, you kind of progress through the game, moving on around until you get to the all important diamonds. And then it feels like once you've got diamonds, the game really opens up. And that's where we can start to bring in stuff like the mob spawner. That's where we can start to do an exhibit about the nether, which could probably end up being a large part of what occurs around here. Although you do have the option of going to the nether if you've still only got iron gear, and so it feels like the iron still kind of connects to the nether in a way. Like as soon as you've got a bucket, you can use a bucket method to create a portal, that sort of stuff. And then if you want to like expand outwards from the stone section into more examples of building and generated structures like village houses and eventually we're going to end up reproducing segments of a woodland mansion. It makes perfect sense that those will stick around out the back here and I don't know I feel like we've got a lot we can work with here it seems like thematically a lot of these things can kind of tie together in this elaborate jigsaw of themes but I think we've laid the foundations for a very good start here and at the very least we know where some of the important structures are that we really need to rely on because we cannot reproduce them anywhere else like the end portal we've got down there and of course the spawner that is currently blocked off on that side we could potentially use the mine shaft that we've exposed over here but reproducing sections of an abandoned mine shaft is not going to be that difficult if we want to create little example structures as part of an exhibit in the museum on the surface and then maybe give the players the option to go and look in a realistic abandoned mine shaft if they want to to witness the generation for themselves right but i think i think i've done enough waffling i think you guys get the idea about how we're going to lay this place out it's going to take a lot more work of expanding and flattening the terrain to get everything where we want it to be but i think we've made a good start so that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide i do hope you've enjoyed taking a look at how i'm going to plan this whole experience out let me know if you liked it in the comments leave a like on it for me while you're there subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care Bye for now.